Now, water-based inks, water-based inks use solvent. Water has a solvent. The, as I said earlier, the resins usually require an, a, a, uh, an environment or a fluid of elevated pH so that the resin can stay soluble. And this recommendation here, you can almost take that to the bank. <coughs> most ink manufacturers I've spoken with, most ink systems I've worked with, my target pH was 9.5. So, which is the center point between 9.2 and 9.8. If you get below that, you can start to have challenges. In fact, one of the things that happens, perhaps your ink still flows, perhaps it's getting a little heavier, but it's not bothering you. However, that whole re-wetting business, where the blade comes around, the ink starts to dry, and it comes back around, when your pH is too low, that ink might not re-wet, and you start to actually build a little layer of dry resin on the surface of that plate that has different properties than the surface of the plate and creates problems in transfer appearance. It can have what we call like a wormy look instead of a nice flat uh, lay down. And also with water-based ink, it's mostly gone when the ink gets dry and it doesn't become a permanent part of the image. Advantage of the water-based ink, prints well on paper. Uh, it's less volatile than alcohol, so you don't have to uh, adjust the viscosity that much. It's safer, and it has a lower environmental impact. Now, water-based ink disadvantages, the ink requires frequent adjustments to the viscosity still. Not as much as solvent, but this still requires adjustments. So you're gonna have the same issue. I just have to skip that vapors part because it's not, well, no, the vapors is uh, ammonia. Uh, the adjustment to the viscosity can uh, affect the pH. Now, here I am, my pH is happy, but my viscosity is high. Now I add some water or some sort of a uh, viscosity adjuster to bring down my viscosity, and it's, it's fooled around with my pH. So, you know, you have to do both things in, in balance. So a lot of ink suppliers offer solutions that adjust the pH and the viscosity simultaneously, but I find that it doesn't do it perfectly. It helps prolong before you have to make a correction, but at the end of the day, you'll probably have to adjust either your pH or your viscosity independently anyway. So it's a nice attempt at reintroducing the appropriate ratios, but you can never get that perfect. And it has the poorest lay down. That's the challenge with water-based ink. Water-based ink lays down on substrates more poorly than solvent or UV inks. And if you use, if you print on film and you do it with solvent and you do it with water, you can see that the water-based ink is going to be usually duller. It's not as smooth and glossy as the solvent-based ink. <clears throat> has the highest incidence of those little specks that I told you about. Lowest gloss, dries slower, it's difficult to re-wet, it's most difficult to clean. That's the funny thing, that same supervisor <laughs> that took me around saying, hey Frank, look at this, uh, this water-based ink, we can throw a drain. He stuck his fingers in that ink, when he took it out, he tried to wash his hand, it didn't get clean. He had ink all around his nails for days. And when it dries on your equipment, when it dries on the floor or anything, you think, oh, water-based ink must be easy to clean up. It is more aggressive than solvent-based ink. It is really uh, difficult, once the, the ink, ink has, has dried on itself, to re-wet it and clean it. So it's difficult to clean tools, and it has the highest incidence of plugging of analog roll cells. So that's one of the disadvantages of it, okay? Solvent-based inks, you can stop the analog roll with the ink dry on it, restart it, and the ink gets wet. Water-based ink, you do not want that analog roll to stop for one second. Because as soon as that ink starts to dry in the cells, it doesn't want to be wet. And if you have some low volume analog surfaces, it becomes a challenge. It's the most difficult to control. 
Water-based ink is ex can be exceedingly difficult to control if you're not on top of it. You really want, must remain on top of it. There are multiple press side additives, whereas the solvent, usually you have like just solvent. Water, you have refresher to, have to replenish the components that have come out. You have a viscosity adjuster, you have a pH adjuster, you have water, you have defoamers, you have all this chemistry that your operators have to deal with. You need to measure the pH besides the viscosity, and it requires a quality water supply, okay? You, you have to have a dependable source of very good, consistent water. And I, I have a client in Nigeria where that was a great challenge. You'd open the valve and yellow sandy water would come out. They would buy water by five gallon jugs just to reduce the viscosity of their ink. A very difficult situation. So the keys to success with water basing, control the viscosity and the pH Control the viscosity and the pH, big time. Uh, it's usually uh, narrow web. So what happens, a phenomenon that I've observed in, in, in my country with narrow web is that they think that they don't have to invest in pumps. Because you know, Frank, I've got short runs. I just put it in the pan. And if, if ink uh, starts to come down, I pour some more in the pan. And I'm not going to invest in using a pump, OK? Consider using pumps anyway. To me, and then be very uh, careful with the add additives, okay? Because they're too often uh, abused or misused. For example, if a little bit is good, then more is better, right? So if an operator discovers that a little bit of defoamer knocks down his foam, he's going to maybe pour a little bit more in there so it doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. And so uh, all of these additives can be abused or accidentally misused. 